they sent a signal soon afterwards saying that we had, had attacked the U-boat with depth charges, the navigator was killed, the captain badly wounded, others were wounded, and the hull was damaged. We needed an ambulance on arrival. On 17th of July 1944, Captain John Cruikshank and his crew on board their Catalina flying boat took off from Sullenvo in the Shetlands to try and intercept German shipping coming out of Norway. They were far no in the far north of Norway near the Lofoten Islands when the radar operator, a man named John Appleton, picked up what he thought was a craft on the surface uh, and they went in closer to investigate. So they flew in conducted a textbook attack run over the U-boat, but unfortunately, uh, as they flew over the U-boat for the first time, the depth charges, the, they didn't drop. So they banked around and came in for a second attack run down the length of the U-boat to try and straddle it again. And they attacked down the length of the U-boat, but into a hail of anti-aircraft fire. The photograph that the Imperial War Museum has in its collection is the only uh, photograph that survived from a whole sequence that was taken. You can see the aircraft just banking around immediately, just a second or two after it's, the depth charges have dropped. And you can also see trace of bullets are hitting the water around from the, from the two blisters on either side of the aircraft, where the machine gunners on the Catalina are trying to keep the heads down of the anti-aircraft gunners on board the U-boat. Several members of the crew had been badly injured. One crew member had been killed outright. It became immediate, almost immediately clear that Cruikshank, as the captain, had been very, very severely wounded. It turned out later on that he'd been hit 72 times. I realised he must be in terrible pain. I could see blood starting to soak through into his chest, even through all his pullovers and flying gear and so on. But he hadn't mentioned any of this at all. He was obviously in very bad shape. I thought he was mortally wounded. Cruikshank knew that the co-pilot was an inexperienced co-pilot with the crew at the time. Um, and so he refused morphine and decided to live with the pain in case he was needed on the flight back. They, they arrived over the base at 3.30 a.m. At that point, Cruikshank insisted on being carried back to the pilot's seat and he insisted on them continuing to circle the base for an hour until such a time as he, was, he felt confident that they could go in for a, a landing run and they went in, they landed, he guided the co-pilot down, uh, but he was so severely wounded he was given a blood transfusion in the cockpit before they even got him out of the aircraft, uh, and he was incredibly lucky to survive. So John Cruikshank was awarded the Victoria Cross, obviously for his incredible bravery in taking the Catalina and dropping the depth charges for a second run over the U-boat, in the full knowledge that he was you know, there's a very good chance they were going to get killed uh, while doing so. But I think, and additionally, he was sort of given the Victoria Cross for in recognition of the efforts he made, even though very severely wounded, to make sure his crew could get back to base from that long five and a half hour flight from the Arctic Circle. After he'd recovered from his multiple wounds, he was never fit enough to fly, fly again. Uh, so, it, but he did go on uh, various morale boosting tours of factories to show people how effective they were being to you know, help the fighting forces. John Cruikshank is the last surviving Second World War recipient of the Victoria Cross and he's going to be celebrating his 100th birthday on Wednesday the 20th of May.